Navy. Riley Smith will kick off this weekend series. Keegan Rothrock with ball one down and away at 6.02. Drizzly night, a little bit chilly as far as Gainesville goes on this Friday, March the 22nd. Kentucky looking for its first SEC win. Florida, which took two or three at Alabama and a 1-1 count to the fifth-year left fielder Riley Smith. Florida with a throwback looking white script, the cool orange and white pinstripe uniforms. There's the first of what we expect will be many swings and misses induced by Rothrock tonight. Gatorade National Player of the Year in high school, Keegan Rothrock. And she strikes out Smith up and away, back to back whiffs. And if you didn't know what Keegan Rothrock was about, you find out four pitches in. And then the swing and miss heat map, when you look at Keegan Rothrock, she relies on that rise ball up in the zone. The exact pitch that she just struck out Riley Smith on is in that red area. That red area is a place that she gets by far the most swings and misses up in the zone. So here's a really fun matchup. Ball one to the aforementioned Aaron Koffel. Indiana native versus Indiana native. Got a low strike call there. William Lopez Palat has the plate in game one. Chris Neighbors at first. Keith Kearney is the umpire at third. Aaron Koffel, the Kentucky RBI and home run record holder. Three walks from tying a record of Griffin Joyner. These are some close pitches that Rothrock is not getting in the second at bat. Aaron Koffel, one of the most discerning eyes in college softball. Her average 358, her on base 523. And one of those hitters, Amanda, it feels like if you're an umpire, I'm sure if she takes a pitch, you may be more lenient toward calling it a ball given her skills. That pitch recognition is something that she has just gotten better at as her career has gone on. Three one is low. Koffel started to swing and she did swing. She got almost yep. all the way down to first <laughs> before the strike call was applied from Chris Neighbors. I mean, it's just shocking that she offered the most at this one, and this one was the, by far the most out of the strike zone, so not even close, but getting antsy on that 3-1 pitch, thinking that she was going to get a little bit something better to hit. And 3-2, she will go down looking. Just the third time Aaron Koffel has struck out this season. And check out this curveball. So we talked a lot about Rothrock's rise ball, but this is a curveball that just paints the outside corner. That curveball has the best velocity out of any of her pitches between 68 and 72. And that rise ball, by the way, Kevin, that she will throw through the zone and out of the zone will be about 63 to 67. So a different speed for that rise ball. It's why she's so tough to time up and hit. What an amazing start for Rothrock, getting Koffel at a 20 to 2 walk to strikeout ratio, swinging at the wrong pitch, taking the wrong pitch after that. Now the freshman Allie Hutchins, 387 on base, four home runs, a very good first college year. And a strike looking for Hutchins, one and two. This is a Kentucky team that is eight out of 13 teams in the SEC in scoring. They hit for a lot of power. They've had a lot of clutch hits late this season. Hutchins, who's already been deemed clutch Hutch, has come up big in her first year. There's a freshman behind her in Peyton Plotz. It's a mix of youth and experience for Rachel Austin in year 17 with the Wildcats. Another one, two. Oh. Rothrock, the freshman star in search of a one, two, three. Oh. And 
And she didn't quite get it. Yeah, so you're seeing early that the bottom of the strike zone isn't going to get called much. And it's going to play in favor for Rothrock because she is more of a pitcher that likes to be more up in the zone. But that looked like it got the bottom of the zone to me. Rose Hutchins. Back-to-back -back full counts and back-to-backers who will take aim at Florida for the first time. Comes from the left-hand side, throws with good velocity. More of an east and west type pitcher. Go-to pitches are that curveball and a screwball. She can go up in the zone a bit too, but really get to favor her arm side. So inside to lefties and away from right-handed hitters is where she likes to go. Kendra Falby leading off once more for Florida. And the first swing and miss induced by Vickers against the SEC hits leader. 45 hits, 30 games. Fourth most in Division I for Falby. And she'll take just off the plate. Well, and she's just so dangerous with her speed, Kevin. She already has 22 infield singles. All of last year, she had 25. So using her speed a little bit more, putting the ball in the dirt, using her legs. Down she goes here, though, and it's four strikeouts to start the game as Jaden Vickers opens her account with a kick. A really good location. Look at how this pitch moves away and down from Kendra Falby, gets her to chase that pitch about a ball off the plate and gets her out of a strike zone that Florida does not do very often. They're so picky, so patient at the plate. 53rd strikeout of the year, 55 innings. And ball one to Skylar Wallace. Every time Florida's number 17 is at the plate, you stop what you're doing and you watch because the show can begin at any moment. Batting average 487. That is ridiculous. The on base is 630, 63% of the time. A little less than two thirds she has reached bases here. Two and one for Wallace here. And she could do everything, Amanda. I, there's no pitch that Skyler Wallace cannot hit. This is her batting line per pitch type this year. And you'll notice she has a home run off of every pitch except for the drop ball. Wallace drills this one into right field. That ball cracked to the wall on a hop. Hit so hard that only a mere mortal wouldn't be able to turn that into a double. Skyler Wallace with a ringing extra base hit, her 10th double and 20th extra base hit of the year. Her exit speed, Tim Walton told us the head coach at Florida, is sometimes 80 miles an hour. On time with this pitch, a little bit more elevated in the zone, and Skyler Wallace can handle up in the zone so well. And usually, it's for extra bases. Slugging percentage of 949 just went up. And a third straight lefty to start for the Gators is Jocelyn Erickson. And I have a feeling that that's why Vickers got the start in this game. Florida has a lot of left-handed power hitters in their lineup. And I think Rachel Lawson looked at the numbers and liked the matchup. I think we both expected to see Stephanie Schoonover get the start for Kentucky. But because of all these lefties in the Florida lineup, I think Vickers, and especially with how she's performed this season as a transfer, getting the start here in game one. If you look simply at numbers against lefties, lefties against Vickers, 188. Lefties against Stephanie Schoonover, 295. Now, right-handers are 77 points higher against Vickers. But again, four of the top five hitters, five of the nine are lefties for Florida. Erickson will take a belt-high strike on 3-0. Jocelyn Erickson, one of the more impactful transfers in softball this season. Came from Oklahoma, won the national championship last year. She was a part-time player for the Sooners. But she was a top 10 recruit in the class of 2022, according to Extra Inning Softball. She's been a star in year one in Gainesville. 3-2, and Erickson punches it out of play. You know, I'll be honest, I expected Jocelyn Erickson to come in and make a big offensive 
contribution as Tim Walton is at his 19th season at the helm of Florida. But I think what has taken me by surprise, Kevin, is how talented she is defensively back behind the plate and the contribution she's made there. She's been by certain metrics as valuable as any defender in the country. And with a very young Florida staff too. Wallace with the lead at second. Another strikeout for Vickers at two in the opening inning. Falby and Erickson both go down. Vickers not looking like she has any fear in Gainesville, on the road, facing the Florida Gators. Calling pitches for Jaden right now. Grace Ballman, a former All-SEC pitcher at Kentucky, calling the pitches, calling the game for Vickers. Who is down 3-0 in the count against Erickson. Battled back for the K. And now the first right-handed batter of the inning, Corby Otis, to take strike one. Back-to-back -back new Gators out of the transfer portal, Erickson and Otis. Corby Otis coming to Florida from Louisville. She is fourth in the nation in on-base percentage. 30 walks, seven strikeouts, and on base of 598. Another swing and miss induced by Vickers. Boy, this is an amazing start to her road SEC career. I'm just smiling big with Roth, Rocky, and Vickers. All these swing and misses that they both had early in this game. Four whiffs in the first inning for Vickers. Rothrock had four swings and misses induced as well. Against some elite tops of lineups. And Rachel Lawson said about Vickers earlier in the season before the Clearwater tournament that this is a pitcher who steps up for big games. Really stepped up and was ready. Beat Northwestern, beat Stanford early on this season. Kentucky played a challenging schedule in February and early March in their pre-SEC schedule. It's a Kentucky team that opened the season with 20 straight games away from home. They played in four tournaments. RSID Chris Scholes tells us they took eight flights. They spent 15 nights in a hotel. They were in San Diego and Clearwater and South Carolina and Charlotte. They're here in Gainesville. And Jaden Vickers missing outside to Corby Otis on the seventh pitch of this at bat. Four years with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Her first in Kentucky, looking for a clean first in Gainesville. And Otis with a late punch to stay alive. The at bat that Otis has put together here after a couple of strikeouts in the sinning and fouling off some pitches, ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Fell off three two-strike pitches, Otis. Another 3-2. And another one fouled away. Corby Otis, a hitter who takes in a lot of information. It was very analytically driven. Trying to find the tendencies here in Vickers. And she'll bounce one to the right side and through. That's under the glove of the second baseman, Margaret Tobias. And on the 10th pitch, Corby Otis wins the battle. And the Gators draw first blood. Such a grinded out at bat for Corby Otis, especially after two strikeouts in this inning off of Vickers. Otis was determined to not go down striking out. Puts the ball in play, finds a hole up the middle. And if you're Margaret Tobias, the second baseman for Kentucky, you have to do whatever it takes to try to keep that ball in the dirt because as soon as it gets to the outfield, you know Wallace is going to score. Corby Otis with her 22nd RBI. And on base percentage right around 600. She brings in Wallace for a first inning Florida run. 
Now Kistler has knocked in 29 in 29 games. And finds herself in a 2-0 count. In the best years of Tim Walton's teams, and there have been a lot of best years, this is the kind of thing his lineups tend to do. Now his teams, Amanda, haven't always been among the nation's leaders in home runs, but typically what a good Florida team does is grind out at bats and get on base by any means necessary. And they always have such good eyes. Like it's very rare that they're going to help out a pitcher and chase out of the zone. And so if you're Rachel Lawson, you know that as well. You want to put a pitcher in the circle that has great command. Vickers enters this game, 52 strikeouts to just 18 walks. She's a pitcher that will consistently be around the strike zone and find corners like that on both sides of the plate. First strike was on the inner half. Next strike was on the outer half. You want to set the tone in the circle. And even though she's given up a run, Vickers has done a nice job in this inning against a challenging lineup. Third straight full count and a base hit yanked through the right side by Kistler. Otis with two outs gets to third. And Katie Kistler keeps the Gator line moving. It's always, Kevin, so tough with two strikes. The RBIs with two strikes and two outs in the inning. Or, well, just one RBI with two outs in the inning. That runner sitting at third base, another opportunity for Florida to try to put more on the board with two outs. That two out scoring is so tough and deadly for a defense. Time is called now. It's the third base umpire. And after this brief delay, Jaden Vickers will throw to Reagan Walsh. Is that tough for a pitcher, Amanda, to have a, a five, six minute delay in the middle of an inning? I mean, I think in this instance, with Florida gaining momentum, it might have actually potentially been a good thing for Vickers. Catch your breath, kind of restart. Walsh, left field, that ball hit on the line right at Riley Smith. And so their team, Florida's top five, nearly 15 wins above replacement. That's an all-encompassing metric, which factors in offense, defense, base running, and pitching. And what it means is that Florida's top five, Amanda, is quite a bit more valuable than anybody else's top five in the game. Yeah, and so those top five would be the four that you saw on your screen that are new faces. So the two freshmen, the two transfers that were not on the roster last year, new faces on their team. And, of course, you add Skylar Wallace to that mix, who has one of the best wars in the entire Division One softball. But see the, the teams that they're in front of with those top five players, a team like Tennessee, and of course, everybody knows Oklahoma, and those top five, five players were Tiare Jennings, Jada Coleman, Alyssa Brito, Sydney Santer, Sanders, and Ella Parker. So, they're, I mean, those top five players can hang with some big dogs in Division One softball and have made a name for themselves and a huge impact for this Florida team. Tim Walton had to Build this pitching staff back from scratch as the freshman Roth, Rock, and Brown have thrown most of the innings. Three and two here for the Kentucky freshman Peyton Plotz. All the experience, the pitching staff for Florida went out the window after what was a disappointing year by their standards last season. Lost in regionals, Palo Alto Regional to Stanford. And a seven in the SEC. 3-2 from Plotz in the left field. Peyton Plotz, the first Kentucky batter not to strike out. And the first Wildcat single. Freshman on freshman here. And you see the pitch location. This is one of the few misses that she's had so far. This is more on the plate about a ball on the plate. And Plotz is just able to get her barrel inside to that pitch and rip it to the left side. After three strikeouts or striking out the side in the first inning, you love the way that the freshman leads off the inning with a hit. Kentucky will bring in an early pinch runner at second base. Or first base, beg your pardon, for Peyton Plotz. Emery Donaldson, Kentucky's number 99, will take over at first base. 
Plots, of course, can re-enter and will for her next at-bat in all likelihood. Now here's some power in the five spot. Eight home runs for Grace Lorsung, the Wildcats senior. And a big swing on the first pitch will stay on the infield. The shortstop, Skyler Wallace. One of the big bats cleared by Rothrock. Brings up Carissa Hamilton, the sophomore catcher. Ball one. I like the offensive production that Carissa Hamilton has had this season with those six home runs, 17 RBI. I feel like the swings that she's had in those home runs, big RBI moments have been so clutch too. And think about the shoes that Carissa Hamilton has had to fill for Kayla Kowalik, who was a mainstay back behind the plate. And in that leadoff spot, too, for Kentucky for several years, one of the best players to ever play at Kentucky. And both of these teams, just and every team in the country, just trying to fill those spots when seniors graduate. It's no easy task. There's a throw to second base. A pinch runner, Donaldson, with a stolen base attempt. And she is cut down by the all-world catcher, Erickson. Wow. Look at this throw by Erickson. And first of all, just the catch that took her way off the outside corner. That throw was low and to Skylar Wallace, it made it easy to make the tag. But the arm that Jocelyn Erickson has shown behind the plate has been so impressive. And we talked about her offensively, but defensively, she leads Division One. All defenders, over 4,000 in defensive runs saved because of her arm and because of her framing abilities does it so big back behind the plate. And she'll hang on to strike three again. App. Bottom two Friday night in Gainesville. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, our SEC Network crew. And the freshman Ava Brown will lead off for Florida. Probably see her in the circle tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon's game on SEC Network Plus at 3 Eastern. Brown starting at first base today. And Brown demolishes one to left field. That ball is a capper. Up against the wall near the World Series appearances. And with Ava Brown at the plate in the circle, Florida might just make it back there. A leadoff double for the freshman. Ava Brown has so much power when she steps in the box. That is a mistake about bell tie. She gets on plane with it, and that is just a smooth, balanced swing for a double that hits the wall for the freshman. She is one of those truly, truly special players, Ava Brown. All one to Ariel Kowalewski. There are not many two-way players like this in the sport. There are a lot of pitchers that hit, but they don't necessarily play a strong first base or are, are good base runners like Ava Brown is. Uh, Amanda, you were one of them. You pitched, you hit, you played first in college. You have an understanding and appreciation of how hard it is to do what Ava Brown does as a freshman in the SEC. Can be a lot of pressure, and I'll be the first to tell you it's a ton of hard work because you're having to put in all the work in the bullpen, all the work taking ground balls, all the work in the cages. And if one little thing is going on, going wrong, you want to put in the extra work and spend more time to get it right. And it's not easy at all. That's why I tend to call pitchers who hit unicorns because there just aren't a lot of them, but they're super special and rare when you have one on your team. Very impactful. Freshman Kowalewski. Will swing through Jaden Vickers third strike pitch for her third strikeout. On to that curveball. All three of her strikeouts have been to left-handed hitters on her curveball. 
pretty much in an identical spot, getting them to chase that pitch a little bit off the plate. That pitch is breaking. Mia Williams, first pitch swinging. And a foul ground for Grace Lorsung at out number two. It's the first, first pitch swing of the game for Florida. It comes from Williams, a 163 hitter down in the ninth spot. So one time through the lineup for Vickers. Kendra Falby struck out on that curveball to lead off for Florida. That pitch has some dynamic late break. Jaden Vickers' career numbers were not great at Rutgers. Four years with the Scarlet Knights. ERA was in the fives in her career. Falby on the ground, a shortstop. She's got electric speed, but Koppel throws her out all the same. Clean. Now, four strikeouts, Tim, for Keegan Rothrock in two scoreless innings. What are you seeing from your freshman starter? Yeah, she's done a good job. She's thrown, uh, looks like, all four of her pitches uh, for a strike, changing speeds pretty well. And uh, I think with the exception of the base hit to left field, looks like her location's pretty good, too. Uh, she's she's, got, you know, she's got, got the ability to do a lot of things with the ball, got a, got a real talent. Coach, and wanted to talk to you about Erickson back behind the plate, her defensive skills. What makes her such a special defender? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Amanda, I've got a lot of catchers, and this kid has been just uh, an amazing uh, thrower behind the plate. Quick release, picking people off, always looking to hunt people down and you know, set the tone right there. A little bit of a kind of a, an awkward pitch. She caught it, just, uh, just played catch with Skyler Wall. She's, she's, done a, she's done a fantastic job so far this halfway. One of the best catchers I've seen in the country so far, for sure. Tim Walton, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. Go Gators. 11 swings against Keegan Rothrock so far, Amanda. Seven misses, two fouls, only two balls put in play. What are you seeing through two innings? See really good velocity and really good movement. And that's just what makes her so tough to hit is that when you have good velocity, that's already tough as a hitter to go up against. But when you add that movement and tight spin that she has, it's what has made her an exceptional freshman and one of the best freshman pitchers in the country. Getting a little more drizzly in Gainesville as she misses with ball one to Jenna Blanton. Florida's top two pitchers are freshmen, Rothrock and Ava Brown. ERAs of .99 and 124 respectively. She's going to have to deal with throwing with a wet softball too. You can hear that rain coming down and hitting our microphones. Coming down a Seems like a little bit harder now. Yeah, this is Gainesville. Two and one for Blanton. What was the hardest pitch for you to throw in rain? To me, it was my drop ball because it's already going to fall out of your hand a little bit versus a rise ball. You're get, you can get more underneath it and kind of guide and push the ball up as much as you don't want to do that as a pitcher normally. Sometimes you're left with doing that when you're throwing in rainy conditions, but when your hand is going more underneath the ball away from gravity as opposed to a drop ball, which goes into gravity, just a little bit tougher to control that, that drop ball when it was raining. She's trying to throw it here. Got one for a strike at the knees. Now misses low, three and two for Blanton. 412 the average, 14 for 34 for Blanton. And we'll slap one out of play. Jenna Blanton, Margaret Tobias, Lauren Borzilleri, two juniors and a sophomore for Kentucky, which has a hit and nothing else against Keegan Rothrock. Three and two. Jenna Blanton has so much speed that even a swinging butt like that off the end of her bat has a chance for her to be able to get on. And infield is playing her pretty tight, knowing that she has the speed, wanting to put the ball on the ground and challenge them. And now, when these outfielders and infielders alike field the ball, the ball is going to be a little bit wet too. So even just a little bit of rain can make an impact on a game defensively. Eight pitch to Blanton and a ground ball right through that drawn in infield. 
Respect the speed of Blanton. Play in, and she'll knock it by you for a leadoff single. These slappers, Kevin, have the ability to read the defense and see what they're giving them. She saw the defense drawn more, the infield drawn more in, so it goes to more of a power slap to be able to shoot it through them and finds a hole. Second straight inning with a leadoff hit. Here's another slapper, Tobias. Margaret Tobias shows bunt. Erickson comes up looking to try to back pick the runner, Blanton. 20 hits for Tobias, 20 singles, one walk, seven strikeouts. Odds are it's going to be in play, whatever it is. Margaret Tobias, a junior from Urbandale, Iowa. She's not the only good athlete from that area playing women's sports right now. In fact, Margaret was high school basketball teammates of Caitlin Clark at Dowling Catholic High School. They're still close friends. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's basketball team will begin their NCAA tournament tomorrow, 3 o'clock, against the mighty Holy Cross Crusaders. Rain really coming down now on a 2-2 count to Tobias. It has picked back up in Gainesville. Yeah, and if you see Rothrock immediately get the throw back from Erickson quick and then covers it with her glove trying to keep the ball dry. And that's Down and away, good pick by Erickson. Great pick. You see her cat-like reflexes and that ball definitely slipped out of her hand. Keegan's going to ask for a new softball. Is that how you try to keep it dry as a pitcher? You try to get it in your glove and cover up as quickly as possible? Yeah, immediately. And then another full count. Fifth of the game to eight batters. Rothrock for Tobias, 3-2. And that is only the second walk of the season for Margaret Tobias, who waits out Keegan Rothrock and gives Kentucky two runners with nobody out. Yeah, I will be the first to say, too, that the rain that's come down this inning has definitely affected Rothrock's command. And you see, again, the ball is going to seemingly slip out of her snap there at her hip. So the nine hitter, Lauren Borzilleri, takes ball one. And if you're Kentucky, with where you're at in your order, you've got to find a way to score here. You have to find a way to pounce. You get your seven and eight hole on. You have no outs. Top of the lineup is looming. This is where you really have to answer back and take advantage of the lack of command here and also that leadoff single by Jenna Blanton. A lot of teams would construct the lineup to have a, a slapper in the nine spot. Kentucky goes slapper seven eight, and the right-handed batting Borzilleri is not a big bunter. And she will square here, right back toward the circle. It's played by the third baseman Kalaluski, who throws it away into right field, and Kentucky ties the game. Blanton scores from second. Tobias goes to third. A rare miscue on the Florida infield, and this game is one one. And it just seemed like it took Mia Williams a long time to get there. You see, she's actually taking a couple of steps towards second base. And then as soon as she sees the bunt put down, she has to shift all of her momentum to go cover first on the bunt. And another freshman, Kowaluski. A hit, a walk, a bunt hit, an error. And here's the top of the lineup. Riley Smith swings through strike one. Erickson throws down to second. Borzelleri faked the steal there with Tobias at third. Kentucky trying to add an element of chaos into this game. Smith will bunt again. This one spins the wrong way for the Wildcats. So much spin off of this bunt, so much spin from the pitch of Rothrock that causes this spin to hit the ground and then take off foul. 
And you forget, too, with how well, Kevin, that Florida has played this year. This is a very, very young team. A lot of freshmen that start for them who have had a lot of success, especially defensively. Smith right back to the circle. Rothrock looks at third, gets the out at first. Well handled by the freshman Rothrock and was knocked out. They have jumped back to the top of college softball this year. So now Koffel, does she get a pitch to hit in this situation? What do you think? No. <laughs> they see first base open and they're going to go ahead and put her there. And we were looking at her career numbers versus Florida, Kevin, and seems to be that's, you know, the majority of the time, especially last year, how Florida wanted to handle her was just to go ahead and walk her nine walks in her career against Florida coming into this game. She's only four for 18 career against Florida, but her on base percentage is north of 500 because of all the walks. And here comes number 10. Aaron Koffel intentionally walked. And that will load the bases with one out for Allie Hutchins. And, and it is a lot of respect, of course, for Aaron Koffel that you don't want her to be the one that beats you with two runners in scoring position. But it just takes off pressure of your defense. Now you have a force at any base, and now you have a potential for a double play to get out of the inning. By the way, the runner at second is Grace Reasoner, a pinch runner for Borzileri. So Tobias Reasoner and Koffel the runners. And here comes Tim Walton out of the dugout after ball one. Little bit. It's still just, I can tell with her release, she doesn't really feel like she has a good grip on the ball, kind of guiding where these pitches are going, not trusting as if it was a dry ball. That is not close. And Rothrock is a pitch away from walking in a run. Three and oh for the freshman Hutchins. Who will take a strike? I'm Ali Hutchins. I am looking for a pitch that is more over the plate right here. If it looks like a mistake, I'm swinging big. Hutchins swings big, hits it through the left side and gives Kentucky the lead with a run scoring single. They call her Clutch Hutch in Lexington. She delivers with a third inning hit to put the Wildcats on top. Look at her go up and get this pitch, anticipating a rise ball up in the zone. You know what the scouting report is like, and she tries to get her barrel on top of that pitch and hits it hard through the left side. That would have been ball four, but when you're Allie Hutchins and you feel like you're on time and going to get something to hit, swing big and puts Kentucky in front. Freshman Hutchins with her 17th RBI of the year, 29 games. Three hits, two walks out of six batters in the inning. And Kentucky with a couple in the third and only one out. Peyton Plotz re-enters the game and takes ball one. And you know how much Kentucky is probably fired up and Aaron Koffel that Florida intentionally walked Koffel to get to Hutchins and she comes through for the team. You gotta love that if you're a Kentucky fan. And you gotta love it if you're Allie Hutchins, a freshman hitting behind a senior. They walk her to get to you and you come through for your team and give your team the lead. Made a lot of the freshmen on Florida and there's been a lot made of them nationally. Kentucky has freshmen in the three and four spots in Hutchins and Plutz. They each have a hit in the game, and now Peyton looking for a second. Out of play one and two. A stretch here, just shy of seven o'clock, which has been pretty rough for Cater Athletics in the last couple of minutes. 
The Florida men's basketball team just lost at the buzzer to Colorado 102 100 after Walter Clayton at a time three and then Colorado came down and beat the buzzer. Now the softball team's given up a couple bases loaded and a cold third strike as Rothrock throws a knee buckler to get plots looking. So surprised she did not take a swing at this one. Look at it. Miss more over the plate. Maybe she was just frozen that it was a pitch that was more over the plate. That was a mistake that Rothrock got away with. Bases full for Lorson. You can see the soft hands of Erickson trying to frame ball one. William Lopez Palat not fooled. Strike one. You mentioned her framing abilities. Jocelyn Erickson back behind the plate. One of the best at framing and getting more strikes for her pitchers. Lorsung out of play one and two. And when you look too, you can actually, you know, there's numbers for this framing run saved. I mean, there's just so many numbers and analytics, Kevin, but when you go into the Jocelyn Erickson framing, she does a better job at pitches up in the zone. That's where Rothrock likes to throw to help her out more. That's down of the zone. That is a called third strike. So Roth Keith Kearney, it appears, has just returned to the field. We have three umpires on the field again. Just got a rousing ovation as he ran back to his position behind second base. Well, that's great to see. How about that? Wow. Welcome back, Keith. Glad to see he's feeling well after missing a couple of innings. 2-0 now for Jocelyn Erickson. So we're back to a three-man crew. You know, I love the way that Coach Tim Walton talked about Jocelyn Erickson and that she's just an A-plus competitor. She wants to throw out every runner. She wants every pitch to be a strike. She wants every at-bat to be her best at-bat. She competes every time. And that competitiveness you love on your team, and especially her coming over as just a sophomore Getting her have her for three years. Asked him what, when he saw her first, he said it was around seventh or eighth grade. And he said, I watched her play way more than I wanted to because she was so good. You just thought, well, she's going to Oklahoma. And she did go to Oklahoma for a year. But in the era of the transfer portal in particular, any relationship you build as a coach, however early it is, can be a relationship that bears fruit down the line. Jocelyn Erickson in a battle for playing time at Oklahoma, as most players are. Gets here to Gainesville immediately into the middle of the lineup. And a huge difference maker for Florida. I've already seen her throw out a runner today. Three and two, Wallace is the runner at first. Wallace on the run. Erickson knocks it out of play and will do it again. When she's getting a catch, and Oklahoma has a catcher by the name of Kenzie Hansen, who they have heard of her, one of the best catchers in the country and a senior, and she's been back behind the plate since she stepped on campus at OU. And so Jocelyn Erickson, I'm sure, wanted to get some time back behind the plate, wanted to be more of a player that in and out of the everyday lineup and now she's the backstop and one of the best defenders in the country and sits right there in the three spot in the order. Wallace going again this pitch is up and away Jocelyn Erickson has the first Florida walk and the Gators have the first two on in the third. So Corby Otis in search of at least her second RBI of the game. And ball one to start from Vickers. All three batters in the inning have started one and oh. And Otis 
starts 2-0. Jaden Vickers just four first pitch strikes out of 13 batters in the game. High pitch count for both pitchers. 67 through three for Rothlock. That's the 58th for Vickers. Down the line and out of play up on the berm and right. First, she had that really long at bat back in the first inning when there were two outs, a couple of strikeouts in the inning, and Corby Otis just battle grinded out at bat ended up in a two out single a two out rbi not easy to put away saw 10 pitches their first at bat here comes the fifth in this one and it's just above the dirt you see vickers wiping her hand down on the towel as well Barely raining right now. It's still enough to throw off a pitcher. The 60th pitch. Otis drills it up the middle. A base hit for Otis. Wallace will round third and come in standing. Two at bats and two run scoring singles for Corby Otis. God, Skyler Wallace has scored 46 runs this season and Corby Otis has now driven her in twice in this game and get her go down and get this pitch changes her posture to be able to get her barrel down to that pitch not a bad pitch by Vickers but just a good swing by Otis who has had a couple of quality at bats and key moments for Florida will stand in Erickson and Otis some runners Little high ball one. How do you keep your composure against a lineup like this, Amanda? Well, that's what I was about to say is that Florida has such good eyes, so it really challenges you to keep your composure, to work centimeters or inches to find the spots to get a called strike and or get a swing and miss or just even get a strike like that to get yourself back into the count. I mean, looking at Florida's offensive numbers coming into this game, they had walked 142 times. They had struck out 89 times. Anytime that you see that strikeout number be lower and the base on balls number, you know that that's going to be a team that is patient, has great plate discipline. And Aiden I think Vickers too, fallen behind all four hitters now in the inning. You see confident takes from them. They're always so sure when they take pitches of what they're seeing. I haven't seen Vickers change speeds much. It's a pitch that she has, but more so going to rely on her side-to-side -side stuff with her curveball and her screwball, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, and throws with good velocity. But being able to change speeds and mix in a changeup would just be so important right about now. The 3-2 is high. Kistler, second walk of the inning. Gators look. And the offensive numbers are better in every way. The ERA slashed more than in half. You like what he did with his schedule, right? A young team that didn't have maybe the kind of gauntlet that Florida always sees before SEC play? Yeah, not a particularly strong non-conference schedule that he put together. But you'll see coaches do that when they, ha when they know that they're going to have a young pitching staff, a young team in key positions at third base, first base, in the circle, at second base, that they'll maybe make a slightly easier non-conference schedule. Reagan Walls in the left center field, and Reagan Walls out of left center field. 
The junior Waltz breaks this game open in the third with a grand slam. And the Gators hit their second slam in three days to take the lead right back. Look how confident this swing is by Reagan Walsh. She just unleashes, thinking that she's got to get the inner half. She did. She is on time, gets her barrel there. It's about belt high. This is a player that hit eight home runs all of last season, and now she already has 11. The six-hole hitter for Florida with the grand slam. Let's break this thing open. The third extra base hit of the game for Florida. It's Reagan Walsh. 11 homers, 35 driven in in 31 games. That is not bad for a six hitter. Ava Brown now. Off the end of her bat, and there's the first out on a pop out to Tobias. Well, and I will say, Kevin, I, we talked about this coming to the series. I said the talk about Florida is that, yeah, they have a great offense. You see them in the top of the nation in a lot of categories, including runs per game, batting average, on base percentage. But people have kind of slighted them a little bit, saying that they just haven't been able to do that against Power 5 teams. And they did have that, quote, unquote, easier non-conference schedule where not like maybe they were putting up bigger numbers against those teams. But I feel like last weekend against Alabama and then what we're seeing here tonight against Kentucky, it, Starting to answer some of those questions. Ariel Kowalewski now, another ball one from Vickers. Now, how good do you feel that this offense is? And I guess the, the logical follow up is how good can it be in two months? I think this offense is so good. You have right handed power, left handed power, you have speed. You saw that they have more stolen bases as well through 30 games up to this point. And I like their mix of having freshmen in there that are a little naive and you don't have as much information on them as some juniors and seniors or even sophomores who have been around a while. A little naive, not maybe feeling as much pressure as an upperclassman who has expectations. Kowalewski in the right field, Kowabunga! Two home runs in the inning, and the Gators are destroying Jordan Vickers here in the third. It is seven to two on the freshman's fourth home run of the season. Because of that rise ball, and I'm telling you, that change up and the ability to change speeds is just crucial against a team like Florida that looks so locked in against the speed that Vickers was throwing in the third inning. This is the eighth batter of the inning. All eight have seen a first pitch ball. This is Mia Williams. And he sees a second pitch ball as well. Six runs in the inning, four hits, two homers, two walks. The only out an Ava Brown pop out. Was the line of Vickers, who was really good for two innings, struck out two in the first, but gives up seven runs and records seven outs. That's what Florida can do to you. It's just such professional at bats, Kevin. I think that's the best word for it whenever you're. More a couple of days ago, anyway, so <laughs> if he lied, blame him. Let's play softball. Scoop. What do you say? <laughs> We're, this at bat is still going on. This is going to be about a 15 minute at bat for Mia Williams, who fouls away the 3 2. Or fouls away the 3 1 to get to 3 2. Mia Williams. Regular second base starter this year. Elevates a high pitch to center field. Mia Williams leads the building.
The freshman hitting just 163. Torpedoes her second home run in college. It is eight to two Gators. You can tell that Florida has just done their homework on these pitchers. Remember, Mia Williams is the first hitter that Langdon is facing, but they know the scouting report is going to be up in the zone with the rise ball. She gets her barrel there. She is anticipating a pitch that has upspin. She gets it. She does the elbow pump, getting down to first base. Three home runs in this inning for the Gators. How about three home runs? Electric players to watch in the NBA in his time. Lottery pick out of Florida. So when your mom's an All-American, when your dad's an All-American, the pressure's got to be high. And Mia Williams is a freshman with an All-American type of swing. 8-2 Gators, 7 in the third. Here's Falby, the ninth batter of the inning for Florida. And Kendra Falby is out at first. Though you can see with her hands to the head, she didn't think she was. She like a challenge, and Tim Walton says, hey, let's go ahead and give this thing a review. Go from the home runs to then the infield single power and speed from Falby. That looked like her foot got there before the ball. To me, these plays at first base just seem to be the most difficult to overturn. So as much as it does look like she's safe, I need to see it a couple more times to see if I feel like this is going to be overturned. And I do think that, you know, that she was safe. Like, that's what maybe I would have called after just seeing these plays over and over again. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to overturn it. That, to me, is the best angle that looks like you should overturn it. But the one on the that's more on the side makes it a little bit tougher to overturn this call. When does the foot hit the bag? Right there. See, I think that that looks like a but definitive they, angle, that one, and there it is. And what they look for, too, though, Kevin, you have to get so specific, and, of course, she has great speed, is the bag compressing down. So it's not just her cleat getting to the bag. They look for the foot compressing down on the base. And I think that one angle, it did look like she was safe. So going to be overturned. And her speed is going to go for another infield single this year. Now, every batter in the inning besides Ava Brown has reached. Don't feel bad for Ava. She had a double in the second. So every Gator has reached base. And the teams had 19 total plate appearances. That's the first first pitch strike of the inning. It came to the 10th batter, Wallace, who started this whole menagerie of offense with a single to center. Falby, elite runner at first. And Wallace is plunked. Shake out the right arm as Skyler Wallace reaches base for the third time on a hit by pitch. Have to try to be so careful when you're. And it worked the inside corner against a hitter like Wallace. You don't want to leave it out over the plate. They're working too far off of the plate and hit her. Skyler Wallace has been hit by more pitches than she struck out this year, nine to five. Jocelyn Erickson, ball one. Uh, Kentucky came into the game with a 292 ERA. That's last in the SEC, 82nd nationally it's not a bad number but in this conference we can just quote Rachel Lawson Rachel told us yesterday if you have a flaw you can't just have a bad weekend in the SEC it's unforgiving if you have a flaw it gets exposed every single weekend and Kentucky's pitching staff has been exposed particularly in this third inning Two and zero. Oh. Yeah, coming into the season, Coach Lawson felt like this is probably the deepest pitching staff that they've had in terms of the quality of pitches that they each can bring and each throw with a good velocity. The upper sixties. Oh. 
Erickson two seven pitch plate appearances first inning strikeout and a walk here in the third. The 11th batter of the inning. And a tight take ball four her second walk of the inning. Fall to third. Wallace to second. Base is loaded for Otis. First pitch, rip, or Beotis. I was thinking about, Kevin, from a big picture standpoint, the strength of the SEC top to bottom this year. And when I think about why the SEC has gotten stronger, I see great freshman classes the past couple of years, but I also see a lot of transfers that come to the SEC or transfers that transfer within the SEC and don't leave the conference i.e. someone like a Bree Ellis who was the SEC freshman of the year, went from Auburn to Arkansas. So you see that the people who do want to leave their teams are staying within the SEC, and then you see somebody like a Corby Otis from Louisville, a Lily Backus from UNC going to Georgia, Sarah Gordon as well going to Georgia, Zeta Pooney, Sophia Nugent from OU. Jocelyn Erickson, like the transfers to me that are coming into this conference or deciding to leave their team and still staying within the conference is what's standing out to me. And I need to be able to do a little bit more research and put maybe some numbers behind this. But I feel like it's what's made the SEC even stronger the past couple of years in the transfer portal that the transfers have gotten has helped strengthen the conference. Had 11 teams ranked out of their 13 in the top 25 most recent poll. After the eye drop delay, a foul ball, not to be confused with the muddy field delay, not to be confused with the fainting umpire delay. You had those three. You have a very strange bingo card right now. Another one, two. Otis will take in the dirt. Off speed from Sidney Langdon. Wait, Kevin, did you, pitches. did you say the Cleat cleaner delay? Did you get that one in there? Cleat cleaner delay. That that was part and parcel with the muddy field delay, but yes. The wooden okay. stick slash cleat cleaner slash diamond dry delay. I would say that was just an A and B situation. Those right. need to be separated. Otis right field. That ball smacked. That ball is foul. See the power that Corby Otis has to the opposite side. A lot of her foul balls have gone to that side and the smoke that ball. I thought that one had a chance of just sneaking in down the foul pole. <clears throat> this inning started at 7.03. How about this by our graphics team? Not the, not the third inning, the bottom of the third. We're 35 minutes <laughs> in, there's been one out. Florida six for seven, a couple of walks, hit batter. Otis takes. Hamilton tried to frame it. It's ball three, just a hair or two low. This has been a 91 pitch third inning between the two teams. Here comes a 92nd with the bases full of Gators. Otis, ground ball, through the left side, another base hit. Falby is in the ball, bobbled out and left by Smith. That allows Wallace to score without a throw. It's 10 to two Florida. It's a nine run third inning and counting. She's been from bad to worse for Kentucky and from good to better for Florida. Fine. Around and then some. Katie Kistler is the 13th batter of the inning for Florida, the Gators. I've seen 12 or 11 of the 12 reach so far. Nine have scored. So the inning has featured three walks, a hit batter, four singles, and three home runs. Walsh, Kowalewski, and Williams in a 6, 8, and 9 spots have all gone deep. Kistler, one of the walks in the inning. And Kistler takes strike two from Lacatetta.
Sidney Langdon, five batters faced, will have three hits, walked one, hit one, three runs so far. Erickson and Otis are her responsibility. Only two for Kissler. Been an increased power year for Kissler. It's moved up to the number five spot for the first time this year, the last four games. Senior from Orange Park. Hey, Kissler's 29 RBIs, eighth in the SEC, fourth most in her lineup. Chance for one here, and that's a line drive to Coffield at short, who does get the out at second. History, just an odd game, Rachel. A cleat cleaning, an umpire delay, a lot of stuff going on. What, what, what did you make of your pitchers and their tough time in the third inning against these Florida bats? You know, we did well. Up, you know, Jaden did a great job up until that. And then, you know, we just weren't finding the zone and we were put too many pitches on the white. And when you do that against a great team like this, they're going to capitalize. And coach, first time seeing Keegan Rothrock in the circle. What have you seen out of her? Well, you know, I've never seen her live, believe it or not, even though um, out on the recruiting trail. I didn't realize how spinny her rise ball is. It's almost a little bit off speed. And then she couples it with that hard drop ball that she comes in low with. But I think from a timing perspective, she really creates a mismatch balance wise. She's a very good pitcher. Rachel, thanks for hopping on. Best of luck the rest of the weekend. All right, thank you. Rachel Lawson at Kentucky. You're 17, 17 years. I don't know how many hour long innings she's been a part of. 97 total pitches thrown in that third inning. 96 pitches for the first four outs, and then one pitch for the last two on a line drive double play off the bat of Katie Kissler. And all of a sudden, Florida's six outs away from a run rule win. The game had trailed 2 1 going into the bottom of the third. Carissa Hamilton. On a 1-0 pitch against Keegan Rothrock, will fly out to Falby in center. Well, and you never know how a freshman is going to respond after a long offensive inning like that. A lot of sitting around, and Keegan Rothrock, it, it feels like it's been forever since we've seen her pitch a pitch, and love to see her go out and get the leadoff hitter out right away. Jenna Blanton started that two-run rally in the third inning. What's the biggest challenge, Amanda, after what was about a 40-minute delay in between pitches for Rothrock? You, you, I know you take the nine runs, but just in terms of your timing on the mound, what's the biggest challenge? Finding that timing and that rhythm again. And, and two, just emotionally, you get so amped up, amped up, your adrenaline is so high to start the game. And so... There's a part of that after you, you know, sit for 30, 45 minutes that, of course, that starts to go down again. And you have to find a way mentally to get to that spot again to be your very best and not just, you know, not just be the 70 percent version of you, but still to raise to the level of you being your best self, knowing that you're six outs away from winning and you don't want Kentucky to get back into this game. Right back to Rothrock, squirrels under her legs. And Blanton is safe at first without a throw. See just what weird spin will come off of the Kentucky bats in this game. I've seen it three or four different times, and it's because of the spin that Rothrock has on her pitches that creates the ball coming off weird with a lot of spin right back at her. I mean, did you see that? It hit the ground, went toward her right foot, and then went in between her feet to get behind her. So a lot of weird spin off the bat. It really challenges these defenders to stay down on the ball and make plays. It's a base hit right through the wickets for Blanton. So two for two night for her, and runner aboard for Margaret Tobias. Heard 
Coach Lawson talking about that spin that is on the rise ball of Keegan Rothrock is kind of that middle speed that she'll throw with, with her rise ball sinking down a little bit behind her fastball and her curveball. She'll also have a change up as well. Just she hasn't had to use it tonight because she's been so dominant with her other pitches. Somebody, you know, you, you watch her pitch as a freshman. She's never too high. She's never too low. She has that poker face about her in the circle that you just can't tell what's affecting her, for better or for worse. It, like, even that pitch right there could have a tendency to frustrate a pitcher or show a little body language or just being upset. But, I mean, if you just watched her and not watched the umpire, you would think maybe she got that call. Maybe she didn't. She always looks exactly the same. Her mom's a pitching coach, Tim Walton, telling us that Keegan was very well coached and likes to coach. She works with little kids. Keegan, she will give pitching lessons. So she has a coach's mindset. It's just a college freshman. Three and two. Off the end of the bat for Tobias. It's lifted out of play. And I thought this was great. Her mom, Laura, said that she broke a lot of things in the backyard. She would pitch in the backyard to her dad all the time, and she was wild and fast. She broke their fence. She broke their neighbor's fence. She broke a window. So didn't always have the command that she has now, but has just been such a hard worker. And as you mentioned, her mom giving pitching lessons, but also working with other people as well. Left side, knocked down to third by Kowalewski. No play at first. It's been a hard evening on the Florida infield to handle some weird ground balls. That one at the third baseman, Kowalewski, who was drawn in, couldn't field it cleanly, and Kentucky puts two on. And here's Borzilleri with two on. Take a strike. And Kevin, Keegan Rothrock always knew that she wanted to be a Gator because she grew up playing on the Indiana Gators. So what she did is that she looked up to see who had, when she was young, who had a Gators, a Gator as a mascot. And I mean, you're not gonna believe this, but there's only one, just Florida. So from that point on, she always knew that she wanted to come be a Florida Gator and wear this uniform and be a different version of a Gator from when she was at the Indiana Gators there. Boy, can you imagine if Evansville changed their mascot from the Purple Aces just to recruit Keegan Rothrock? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the opportunity they could have had, they got the colors and everything, Florida, orange and blue. <laughs> you just never know, right? As a kid, you never know what's going to grab your interest. Keegan Rothrock, like, like many young players, was a big fan of Kelly Barnhill, All-American pitcher here at Florida. A little bit of trouble here in the fourth inning. Blanton with a hit. Tobias reaches in an error against Kowalewski. Second error of the game on the third baseman. And now two and two on Borzilleri. The seven, eight, nine hitters have been on base all five times not technically reached safely because of the e5 but they've made it on base all five times and kentucky trying to chip back away after giving up nine in the bottom of the third two two for borzilleri and a fly ball lifted out of play you're going to think I'm joking when I say this, but the Auburn A&M game is in the bottom of the fourth inning, and they started an hour after us. I do not think you're joking. I feel quite sincere that you're telling the truth. <laughs> By the way, there, there is a pitch clock in the SEC this year. Can you imagine we didn't have that? Oh, that ball, that could be an issue right there with the base runner Blanton crossing in front of the shortstop Wallace. Let's see what... Keith Kearney's got the call here as he's got an out on the base runner. Blanton is out. 
And there are two away in the inning as she may have impeded Wallace's ability to make that play. That's a, a good call, but we've also seen this at times get reviewed and go from potentially being runner interference to defensive obstruction. But I think that this one will stay as is and no challenge. Yeah, Rachel Lawson is going to let it stand. Fielder's choice. Blanton out six unassisted is the official scoring on that. As Wallace was coming to the ball, making a normal attempt to field the play. Blanton initiates the contact, and Rothrock gets the second out in the inning. So Riley Smith batting for a third time in four innings. And you know, Smith and in an 0-2 hole. And despite being down by eight runs, of course, always feel like you can come back, always feel like you can get back into the game. But when you start to use these at-bats and this at these last potentially last couple of innings for is to see Roth Rock to have longer at bats to work her pitch count up knowing that this is a series likely that you're going to see her again to be better the next time that you face her so Kentucky is a bit, if anything at this point has done a nice job of working Roth Rock's pitch count up to 90 just here in the top of the fourth inning and the rest of the staff besides Roth Rock and Brown three combined starts we're going to see her on Sunday all but guaranteed so 91 pitches whether you win or lose it's 91 pitches worth of information right as an offensive lineup here's number 92 Smith puts it in play on the infield Rothrock gets out of it main to Gulf Coast Walsh against Alexia Lacatena was an hour long third inning, which saw Kentucky score two, Florida nine. The Gators are now three outs away from a run rule win. Looking to go to three and one in the SEC, 27 and four overall. And Walsh unloading on another ball. This one playable and right for Plotts. New addition for Florida this year, Francesca Neo, who worked for us for a long time as an analyst calling games. Terrific former Gator. Grace Baldwin has been added to the Kentucky staff as well. And this is one of the significant changes in softball, the addition of a third full-time assistant coach. You can see some of the other big names, including Daniel Gibson here in the Arkansas and another one of our former teammates here at ESPN, the great Caleb Rose at Alabama. Long overdue for the sport and... Where do you think this most benefits student athletes? Attention uh, at practice, but when you have played at a university and you are all about the university, the softball part of it, the culture part of it, and you were just an impactful player, somebody like Anaya, somebody like Bro, somebody like Folly of You at Oklahoma. I mean, the list of those players that are going back to their alma maters and coaching is just star studded, right? But you have that competitiveness that bleeds into the rest of the team. I've seen it with Alabama and the impact that Caleb Bro has made with them. I've seen it with Francesca Anea and the impact that she has made with the Florida Gators. I mean, you just love having somebody around your program that has been there, done that, in that uniform. And also, there's a part of it, too, that you have a female on your coaching staff. She's a mom. Same thing with Caleb Bro. There's just a different part of it that gets to bleed off to the rest of your team as they have another role model to look up to that they get to see every single day. Freshman Ava Brown on a one two count here. Ava Brown right side that ball hangs up for plots as well. OK, so we hear all the time in society about how this is a different generation of kids, right? The Gen Z group. You are around a lot of younger players uh, in your work as a pitching coach. How much does a school's tradition or history mean to the typical high school player, the typical kid who wants to go to Florida or Kentucky? 
what does it mean to them to have somebody who's been at that school and excelled at that school if it's 10, 12, 15 years before they get there? Yeah, I think that they love it. I think, too, that their parents love it, too, because they know that somebody who is independent, determined, driven, and has been successful, that their daughter is going to get to be around whenever they leave their house and uh, they don't get to be around their parents <laughs> every single day anymore. You want to trust the coaching staff and trust the people that you're putting your daughter around. So I think that all of that goes into a decision for an athlete to make it to the next level and where she's going to go. Fouled away by Kowalewski. Did you play against Francesca? Yes. Uh-huh. We did. She is, uh, there's Grace Ballman there in the Kentucky dugout calling pitches for the Kentucky pitching staff. Very successful pitcher. Just finished just a couple of years ago. She's not as old as Francesca and I. Was it 08 World Series you guys, your team yes, played so against each other? Yeah, we played each other in the 2007 Super Regional and College Station. I think she was a freshman at that point, and we faced each other in 2008 at the World Series. 61 home runs, three-time All-American, what an addition to the Florida staff. An elite statistical start for Florida. Man, they're going to have to get through Aaron Koffel and the 2-3-4 Kentucky hitters looking for another run rule victory. This is where you still have to be careful if you're the freshman in the circle because one swing takes the run roll off the table, at least for this half inning. Of course, you'd have a chance to score in the bottom of the fifth, but just an eight-run lead and with a swing like Aaron Koffel, she could quickly turn things around. One swing from the player who is often there, one swinger. 13th in the country and a home run. This is a ground ball to short. Wallace, a deep pick in the throw to first for the out. Great angle she took on that ground ball. Her footwork over the past couple of years at shortstop has gotten significantly better. Worked hard with Tim Walton. You see the angle that she took. Her continue to move, to move her feet and make that strong throw. So Koffel 0 for 2 of the walk. Once more, Florida's kept her in check. Kentucky did take the lead with a two-run third. Second came home on Allie Hutchins' single. Bases were loaded with one out in that situation. And then Rothrock struck out Plotz and Lorson to strand the bases loaded. Kentucky has not scored since, and Florida's put up nine. It's their 18th game this season with 10 or more runs. I think that you've seen Florida, too, in this game, just handle up in the zone against the Kentucky pitchers extremely well and hit it for power. You saw Lacatena come in, who was more down in the zone, the third pitcher that Florida saw in this game, and looked pretty good. But Florida clearly had a plan to be able to look for pitches that were up in the zone with the rise ball and handled it well. And we were looking at numbers coming into the this series. Kevin, you and I were texting about it. How does Florida handle a rise ball? And, as a team, they hit for the seventh best slugging percentage off of a rise ball. So they handle it well and can hit for power. And I think that's what we've seen in this game. Three home runs in a 13 pitch span back in the third inning. 100th pitch of the game from Rothrock is off the plate. Two and two for Hutchins. By the way, Avery Gels has come in to play first and Reagan Walsh over to third. Kawaluski replaced. Keegan Rothrock's 2-2. We'll have to wait. If you're waiting for Florida LSU baseball, we will get you there. The moment this game ends, Tom Hart, Kyle Peterson, Ben McDonald. Number six versus number five. Two more outs without a run. We'll get you there quickly. If Kentucky scores, this game will go into the bottom of the fifth. There are the defensive changes for the Gators. Who shore up the corners? Three and two now for Hutchins. Oh, yeah. 
Right field, this is Katie Kistler. And that could be the penultimate out. The Roth Rock has done a good job in maybe situations that don't always stick out to everybody, a.k.a. after that bottom of the third inning, coming back out to the top of the fourth and being pretty efficient. And then also when your team gets you an eight-run lead and you have a chance to run rule, you want to go right at the hitters. You don't want to mess around. You don't want anybody getting on base. You still want to be able to get those outs. And that's something that you see a veteran do a lot is just handle those situations with ease. But you don't always see it from a freshman. So just seeing different strengths of Roth Rock at just such a young age, not just with her pitch velocity and her spin, but just with the way that she's handled different situations in this game. Row two is just outside to Peyton Plotz. That looked like a rare moment of breaking character from Roth Rock. <laughs> yeah. One out away from a five inning complete game and plot stays alive. Keegan Rothrock has started 15 games. She has completed 11 of those 15 coming in trying to make it 12 out of 16 tonight. Five hits two runs one earned. She's walked two, struck out six started this game with a statement striking out Smith the Almost unstrikeoutable Koffel and Hutchins in order in the first. A one two. Will end the game on a strikeout. It begins and ends with a K. Appropriately so for Keegan Rothrock.